Okay, let's be honest. Intel's naming system sometimes looks like someone just smashed the keyboard after typing the word Core i7. You see stuff like i7-13700KF and think, bro, is this a password or a processor? But don't panic. In this video, I'll explain exactly what every Intel desktop processor suffix means in the simplest way possible. And yes, there will be jokes, so you won't fall asleep like you did in math class. First up, the famous K. The K stands for unlocked. That means you can overclock it, basically pushing the CPU to run faster than Intel originally intended. Think of it like a car with no speed limiter. You can floor it if you want, but be careful because overclocking without the right cooling is like chugging 10 Red Bulls without water. You'll run fast, but you might not survive. Most gamers and PC enthusiasts love the K models because they give extra performance if you know how to tweak them. You'll need a Z series mother board if you actually want to unlock that overclocking power, otherwise you just paid extra for nothing. Next, let's talk about KF. The KF is basically a KCPU unlocked but with no integrated graphics. That means you must have a graphics card or else your monitor will just sit there like, bruh, what do you expect me to do? Think of it like buying a sports car, uh, but without the wheels. Yeah, it's powerful, but you're not going anywhere without the extra parts. The good news is KF models are often a little cheaper than the regular K versions. That makes them a solid choice if you're 100% sure you're using a dedicated GPU anyway. Now moving on to F. The F means it's a locked CPU, no overclocking, and it has no integrated graphics. So it's basically the budget version, cheaper, but you'll need a GPU to even turn the thing on. It's like that one friend who always shows up to the party but never brings snacks. You'll need to provide the extra stuff yourself. F processors are super popular because they give you the same performance as their non-F cousins, just at a lower price. They're great if you wanna save money and you already plan to use a graphics card. But if you're troubleshooting and you you remove your GPU, you'll regret not having integrated graphics. No picture, no fun. All right, now let's check out KS. KS is like the limited edition turbo model, same as a K, but Intel factory overclocks it to run at even higher speeds. Basically, the CPU equivalent of a Red Bull-fueled gamer at 3 a.m. Owning a KS is like having a Pokemon shiny version. It doesn't really make you stronger at school, but it sure makes you feel cooler. These chips are usually released in smaller numbers, so they feel a bit more exclusive. They tend to run hotter though, because of those higher boost clocks. Enthusiasts grab them for bragging rights and top tier performance benchmarks. Up next, the T models. T means power efficient. It runs at lower wattage, so it's cooler and uses less electricity, usually found in office PC or compact builds. This is the CPU you give to your parents. They don't need speed. They just want to watch YouTube without the fan sounding like a jet engine. Performance is usually lower, but that's the trade-off for saving power and running cooler. These are great for small form factor builds like mini PCs or all-in-ones. They're not built for gaming monsters, but they do the job for office work and light media. Let's quickly talk about P. P is kind of rare now. It used to mean no integrated graphics, just like AUF, but it was used in older generations. These days, you don't see it often. It's like that old Nokia phone you had in a drawer. You forgot it existed, but it's still technically alive. Back then, Intel separated P models from standard ones just to make product lines clearer. But eventually, the F suffix replaced P and became the standard for no GPU. If you find a CPU with P today, it's usually a sign you're looking at an older generation. And finally, the big one, XE. The XE stands for Extreme Edition. These are the big boys, high-end desktop CPUs for enthusiasts, usually with more cores and insane power. Buying an XE chip is like showing up to a water balloon fight with a fire hose. Sure, it works, but was it really necessary? They're made for heavy workloads like video editing, 3D rendering, and workstation tasks. Gamers rarely need them since most games don't fully use all those cores. They also cost a fortune, so unless you're Jeff Bezos, you probably don't need one. And there you go, that's every Intel desktop CPU suffix explained as simply as possible. So if this helped you finally understand Intel's alphabet soup, hit that like button, subscribe for more beginner-friendly PC guides, and drop a comment. Which CPU suffix do you think fits your personality the most?